All right, let's be real for a sec. Quantum computing, it can sound a little bit, you know, Star Trek y. Yeah. A bit out there. But that's what we're diving into today, trying to make it feel as relatable as like that app on your phone that you use every single day. Yep. We're talking Thermin Q. And because we love a good visual aid, picture this. You know that slide you sent over, the one with that crazy intricate circuit board? You talking about slide one? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's uh, a lot. It kind of looks like, honestly, if you opened up my brain on a Monday morning, it would look a lot like that circuit board. Sure. But that's the challenge that their main queue is tackling, right? It is. Because quantum computing, it's rapidly evolving, but it feels like a bit of a hodgepodge right now. It does. Yeah, I mean, think about it. I mean, there are a lot of different systems. There are a lot of different tools out there, and they don't always play nice with each other. Hmm. And that lack of standardization can be a real barrier. Okay. You know, to imagine you're trying to bake a cake, right? Okay. But every ingredient comes with its own set of instructions and measurements. Chaos. Total chaos. And you end up with a real mess. So their MinQ, they want to be that common recipe book, right? Mm -hmm. For the quantum world. So instead of this like jumbled mess of kitchen gadgets, we end up with a really streamlined, efficient setup. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I okay. mean, their MinQ is all about bringing order yeah. to that quantum kitchen, if yeah. you will. It's about making it easier for researchers, developers, really anyone to come in and work their magic. Yeah. And to me, it's like the difference between building a house with just hand tools versus having, you know, your power tools and everything. You can still get the job done the old way, but it's going to be a lot slower and probably a lot more frustrating. A lot more painful. Yeah. A lot more painful. Exactly. So it seems like Thurman Q, it understands that. Like a contractor who needs the right tools you need the right tools and workflows in quantum computing as yeah. well. And that's where this whole concept of data ops comes in, right? Exactly. And data ops, it's all about bringing those principles of, you know, efficiency, continuous improvement, you know, ideas we've seen work in other fields like manufacturing, like software development, agile, DevOps, lean, all that, bringing it to data. So taking what works and applying it to this new world. Exactly. I like that. Uh -huh. Okay. But what does that actually look like in Thermin Q? Well, if you flip to slide three, you'll see there's that infinity symbol. Okay. And that symbolizes that kind of iterative nature of data ops, this constant cycle of mm -hmm. building, testing, releasing, deploying, operating, monitoring, you know, all over again. Yeah. And ThermQ really bakes that right into the platform. So it's not like a one and done. It's this constant refining, optimizing. It is. Kind of like a chef tweaking a recipe. Exactly. And that tweaking, that iterating makes a more reliable experience. And that leads us to this idea of, and I'm gonna quote them directly here, every time a clean room experience. Okay, every time a clean room experience, it sounds a little clinical, a little sterile. It does. But for someone using Thermin Q, break that down for me. What does that actually mean? So what it means is no matter what system you're using, you're on, what environment, mm. Thermin Q wants to make sure that you have an experience that's predictable, it's reliable, it's enjoyable even. It's about removing that friction, that frustration that we know comes with working in a field this complex. So no more late nights, banging your head against the keyboard, trying to figure out why your code works on one quantum computer but not the other? Yeah, none of that. Okay. No more of those headaches. And in fact, they lay out how they're going to do this on slide five. Okay. And a big part of it is automation. Automation, music to any developer's ears. Less time wrestling with the tech, more time for those aha moments. Exactly. And I'm also seeing this emphasis on trust and collaboration. For sure. That seems like a key part of their approach as well, at least based on point two here. Absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. building a sense of community, especially in a field like this, so complex, changing so rapidly, that's huge. So it sounds like it's more than just a piece of software. It's trying to foster a whole ecosystem. Yeah, they're laying the groundwork for the future of quantum computing, where it's accessible, it's collaborative, and ultimately way more impactful because of that. And to do that, they've created this whole quantum toolbox, which we're going to unpack in just a moment, right after a quick break. Stick around. Things are about to get even more fascinating. And we're back, folks, ready to unlock this Theremin Q toolbox. And from what I can see here on slide six, it's pretty jam-packed. It is, yeah. They really want to be the one-stop shop for all things quantum computing, no matter, like, your level, if you're just starting out or you're knee-deep in research. So there's a little something for everyone. But to make this a bit more concrete, can you walk us through a couple of the tools that really show us how Theremin Q works? Yeah. So let's look at, for example, Theremin QTNND, which stands for, get ready for this, 
Deep Tensor Neural Network. That sounds a little intimidating, not going to lie. It's a mouthful. Yeah, like only a supercomputer could handle that. Right. <laughs> it sounds complex because it is. Yeah. But that's a perfect example of how ThermonQ takes something very complicated and makes it, you know, user-friendly. Deep Tensor Neural Networks. These are a type of AI. And they're really good at taking huge amounts of data, making sense of it, making predictions. They're already used in things like, you know, image recognition, even understanding what you're saying right now. Okay. Natural language processing, as it's called. So serious AI firepower here. It is. But how does that work in the quantum world? Yeah. So imagine, let's say you're a researcher. You're trying to, I don't know, design a new drug. Okay. You have tons of data on molecules. A quantum computer using something like Thurman Q, TNND, could go through that data way, way faster than a regular computer could. And maybe find those drug candidates, those breakthroughs, in a fraction of the time. So it's like having the super-powered research assistant just churning through data, finding those hidden connections. Exactly. Yay. But then you've got all this data, yeah. right? Quantum data is messy. Right. So that's where something like Theremin Q. Bonsai visualization comes in. Okay. This is about taking that quantum language and turning it into something we can understand. So instead of just having raw data, we're talking about like those amazing pictures we see from telescopes in space, like really being able to visualize it. Exactly. You're getting it. Theremin Q. Bonsai visualization lets you play with that data but in a visual way. So you can spot patterns, you can see the connections. So again, it seems like that's the theme with Thurman Q, right? Taking something that's really complex and making it user friendly. Yeah. And that idea of the user, how they're going to use it, that's huge when we're talking about how it's deployed, how it's accessed. So you're talking about slide seven now, spotlight on workbench from data center to workstation. Yeah. Sounds fancy, but break it down. So think about it right now. If you want to work with a quantum computer, good luck. You need to be in a special lab, a data center. It's a whole thing. Thurman Q is saying, no, in the future, you should be able to do that from your laptop anywhere. Okay. That is a game changer. Right. Whether you are a researcher doing simulations or you're just a student who's curious, Thurman Q wants it to be the same easy experience for everyone. And that's where the whole cloud native thing comes in. Okay. So cloud native, it's a buzzword. We hear it everywhere. I do. What's it mean for Thurman Q? Imagine this. Instead of needing to buy like a whole set of encyclopedias taking up all this space. Yeah. You can just open up Wikipedia on your phone right now. Right. That's kind of the cloud. It's like those resources, those services, but you access them remotely whenever you want. So it's about taking something that used to be exclusive and making it accessible to everyone. Yeah. And for something as potentially groundbreaking as quantum, that is a big deal. That could be huge for innovation. Yeah. Because now anyone with an idea can jump in. Exactly. So we've got the tools, we've got this focus on the user experience, and then we've got this cloud access that opens everything up. It really seems like Thurman Q is trying to bring quantum computing to the mainstream. They are, and it's still early days, but you can't deny the vision here, right? They're definitely onto something. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll unpack the potential impact of all of this. Okay, so we've talked about what Thurman Q is, this whole toolbox idea, and how they're doing it, that whole data ops thing, making it easy to use. But now, let's talk about the why. What's the big picture? Why does all of this matter? So for me, I see Thurman Q as this bridge okay. between quantum computing, how we know it now yeah. is stuck in these labs, and a future where it's just, it's like the internet, it's everywhere. So not just for the select few anymore, it's something that like anyone with a good idea, an internet connection can tap into. Exactly. And think about it. Think about PCs, the internet, early days, right? Yeah. When those things became accessible to everyone, boom. Innovation exploded. Right, because you don't need a multi-million dollar quantum computer to even, like, dip your toes in the water. Exactly. And it's amazing to think about how much has changed. Like, the smartphone, you're probably listening to this on right now. Right. That wouldn't exist without these big moments of tech becoming open to everybody. Totally. And that's what Sermon Q, I think, is going for. That same kind of impact, but with quantum. Yeah. And they actually give us a little peek at it. On slide eight, there are some demo links. Demos. All right. The proof is in the pudding, right? What kind of sneak peeks are we talking about? Well, there's one to explore their whole ecosystem. So I'm guessing like a deeper dive into how everything works together. Mm -hmm. There's one for their VDI workbench, which sounds like it's all about that remote access, the collaboration part. Okay. But then there's this 
desktop overlay demo. And that one, that's got me curious. Ooh, desktop overlay. What could that be? Right. Like, is that how we'll use quantum apps in the future? Some kind of overlay on top of our regular work? I don't know. All right. Now i got to check these out. After this, I'm going straight to those links. Me too. And that's what gets me excited about ThermaQ. It's not just, here's the product, done. It's like this living thing, always changing. Like quantum itself, always evolving. Exactly. And that's why these tools are so important. It's not just about the tech. It's what we can do with it. I mean, medicine, materials, AI, who knows? It's exciting, but also, like, kind of daunting to think about. It is. But thanks to you, I feel like I actually get ThermaQ now, what it is, why it matters. Glad to do it. Love a good deep dive, especially when it's something this groundbreaking. And a huge thanks to all of you for listening, for joining us on this little journey into the quantum realm. Yeah, thanks everyone. And hey, don't forget to click those demo links. Let us know what you think. Until next time, stay curious, and we'll catch you on the next deep dive.